Today we're making a vegetarian version of Thai inspired red curry. So um, we're going to start today with the aromatics and I want to make a point when we first begin is, yep, I use a store bought red curry paste. Let's face it, who has time to make curry paste from scratch and this Thai kitchen red curry paste is just fine. And I just enhance it with a little bit of extra grated garlic and some ginger and some lime zest and stuff once we get further on. But to start the recipe off, what we're going to do is get the aromatics cooking. I've got a couple of tablespoons of vegetable oil in my Dutch oven over here. And I'm going to take a little bit of the, uh, I love Thai kitchen coconut milk the best. And when you open the can, you'll see there's this thick, thick coconut milk on top. And just take a couple of spoonfuls of that and put it in with the oil. And then we're gonna add the aromatics and let that cook for about five minutes. And that infuses the, um, the bit of the coconut milk with all the flavors and gets everything blended together. So that when we go on to the next stage, you've already got a really good base of Thai curry flavor. So while that's cooking, I'm gonna go over the ingredients that we're gonna use for the rest of the curry. So um, for flavoring and sauce, it's coconut milk, as I said before, Thai kitchen. Full fat is my preferred um, choice of coconut milk, or you can use the light version, but I like the mouthfeel and the richness of the full fat coconut milk, so I recommend that. In this case, I'm keeping it vegetarian, so I have a cup of vegetable stock, and I did buy this President's Choice version. I tried it, it's a bit sweet, so just be careful when you're adding the brown sugar and make sure you don't put too much brown sugar in if the vegetable stock has a bit of sugar in it already. Um, we're gonna use tamari, that keeps it gluten-free. Later at the end, we add some lime juice and cilantro. And I prepped our veggies already. So we have carrots and sweet potatoes and they're gonna go in first. And then we have zucchini, peppers, snow peas, which go in at the end with the cilantro and lime juice, and a can of green chickpeas, which has some protein to the mix. That's been simmering now for 10 minutes. So we're gonna do step three of four steps and that's add the medium length cooking vegetables. So in my case, I have zucchini, peppers, and the chickpeas we're gonna add in. So we're just adding those in, and that's all we have to do. So I want you to remember, you can put whatever vegetables you like. It's a perfect recipe to clean out the fridge, use up what you have, cauliflower, broccoli, any vegetable that you really enjoy. You could put regular potatoes instead of sweet potatoes. So just remember, you can use any vegetables that you like to make it your own. When you're serving your curry, I serve it with Thai jasmine rice, and I do add a little bit of red pepper flakes to my bowl because we are serving some kids with this meal and we don't wanna make it too spicy for them. And the other thing you can add is some Thai red chilies to the actual cooking. If it's people who love spicy, that is a really nice addition to the curry. You can get the long finger peppers, so that's really good. So the final stage is to add in the citrus and the cilantro. If you're not a fan of cilantro, you can always replace it with some basil or parsley or even some kale or something leafy just to add the greens to your curry. But for me, I love cilantro and I'm putting it in. And if you use cilantro, Remember, you can use the stems too, they have a ton of flavor. Uh, now, the snow peas are going in right now as well, but just remember if you, I'm not serving this right away, so they will cook a little more than maybe is ideal, but just 
Remember, if you're serving a special meal and you want to add the snow peas in the last couple of minutes of cooking, then they're going to have a nice little crispy, fresh crunch to your curry. It's going to taste really good. Um, so before you add this in, remember to check your sweet potatoes or potatoes or carrots to make sure they're cooked enough. And then if you're happy with the softness of all the veggies in there, go ahead and add in your citrus, your cilantro and your snow peas. And that will be your curry all ready to go. Just let it simmer for a couple more minutes at the end and that'll be it. So that's how easy it is to make Thai style red curry at home. Vegetarian, really healthy, a great way to use up the veggies in your fridge. Make it the way you like with your choice of vegetables and easy homemade Thai style red curry. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Heidi's Family Kitchen.